What is up? Welcome to Devos with Pack, Devotions with Pack, a time where we get to get into the Word of God and I get to share what God has given me. Hey, one of my favorite scriptures in the scripture every year um, in our ministry, Pastor Evans and I, we pick prophetic scriptures that set our year. And I have seen the Word of God come to come to life every year. Last year, the scripture I received, it came to pass. This year, this scripture that God has given me, I just want to share it with you and just encourage somebody in our default today. It's found in Zechariah chapter four, uh, starting in verse number six. And here it talks about the vision of the lampstand and the olive tree. And it talks about how the angel had uh, come before uh, the man of God, come before the prophet of God, J Jeremiah. It talks about the seven lampstands. Of course, if you know your Bible, it's in your Bible. It talks about the seven lampstands again in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. It talks about the seven lampstands. And so here is specifically talking to the body of Christ and to the different <coughs> congregations of the body of Christ and the churches is what the word of God tells us. So he begins by talking about the seven lamps to the seven pipes to the seven lamps and the angel is around them and talking to the prophet here. And then we pick up in verse number six, which really blessed my spirit. And this is the scripture that I picked for verse six, but I want to read the entirety of the, the answer um, from the angel to the prophet. And this is what he says in verse number six. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall not become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. That's double grace, by the way. Then verse eight says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Again, verse six, the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I was reading this and it really just blessed my spirit because it began to talk to me, number one, about never trying to do anything in and of ourselves. One thing you have to understand that anything that you create in and of yourself, you have to maintain and continue to give life to in and of yourself. It's not by my own might. It's not by my own power. It's not by my own wisdom that I stand before you today. It's only by the spirit of God that led me into this time with you. And that goes for anything. And I do mean anything in life. It's only by his spirit. Everything we should do should be spirit led. Even Jesus, when he went into temptation or when he went into the wilderness, he was led by the spirit to go into the wilderness. So even those times that seem crazy, the spirit of God can lead you even in those times. And Jesus shows us that when you look at the, the account of him in the wilderness and then coming out in the temptation of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage some Somebody who's watching right now that at the end of this all there's nothing that you can do in and of yourself it's only by the Spirit of God and being led by his spirit that you're able to do what it is that you do that's the first thing that blessed me but secondly what really blessed me, of course, uh, if you know me, I'm a musical person that who are you great mountain that you should not become a plane. Understand he wasn't he wasn't just, you know, he wasn't just talking. He was like, who are you great mountain? Like ain't nobody scared of you mountain. <laughs> like you will even become flat. You are nothing. This this obstacle, this thing that I'm facing, this this situation, this this mountain before me. I, I have flown all across the world. And every time that I fly, what amazes me is how high you get. But when you get that high, you're so high that you're above the mountains and you see my goodness. Even these mountains look flat because of how high I am. And that is the beautiful thing about the presence of God, that you can get so close to the presence of God and be so full of the spirit that you get so much higher and so much above every mountain that the enemy tries to erect in front of you and say, who are you great mountain? I know you're big, but you have to become a plane that blesses my spirit. I'm sorry. I love the word of God. Then he says, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, 
grace to it. Grace, grace, double grace. Some of you need to receive an extra grace today. That is something that I can testify to the grace of God. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I usually have to go figure something out. I usually have to go ask somebody. I, I People think this is easy for me. No, sir. It is grace and grace alone that I'm saved. It's grace and grace alone that I'm able to sit before you today and have this Devo. Grace, grace. And I want to send that to someone who's watching right now. Extra grace, not just a one servant of grace. God, give me two servants of grace. Your grace is so good. I want grace, grace, double grace. And so he says grace, grace to it. And then he says this part. And this is where I want to challenge you. One thing you know about me, I believe in challenging your faith to not just hear it, but to apply it. And application is about action. Faith without works is completely dead. I'm not even saying a little bit dead. It's completely dead. You can't tell me you walk in faith. As Paul says, show me your faith. I'll show you my faith by what I do. I walk in faith. I don't just sit in faith. I act in faith. And so when I read this verse nine, he says the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. What are your hands in? What, what are your hands in? Here he's speaking to the service of the believer. That Zerubbabel's hands have laid the foundation of this temple. Some of you have gifts, you have callings, you have talents. And there's a local church wherever you're watching from today. And if you're here in my city, we are a local church that can use your gift and can use your hands to lay this foundation. Here the word of God is speaking to your service to him. It's not that I serve so I can get saved. It's I serve because I'm saved. I, I, I've been bought by the blood of Jesus. I have tasted and seen that he is good. He saved me. He delivered me. He healed me. And because he's done that, I serve. I work for him. Again, I can't work to be saved. There's nothing I can do in and of myself. That's why he started not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. It's only his spirit that leads me to the goodness that is him and leads me to repentance. And so I realized at the end of it all, it's only my hands that he can use to lay this foundation. He says, Zerubbabel's hands laid the foundation of the temple. What local church are you a part of? What ministry, what mission are you a part of? What are you doing to help build the foundations of the temples of God? God most high. What are you doing? What is your hands in? A lot of times we put our hands in all kinds of stuff. We put our hands in this. We put our hands in that. But God is saying, I need your hands to serve and help to build the foundations of this temple. And so I want to encourage you today. I want to challenge you with that. Check yourself. Say, God, in 2021, in 2022, 23, whatever year, I don't want to be idle. I want to be one whose hands are building the temple and the foundation, the foundation, what we stand on. You know, there's some things that you will put in place in ministry. You will put in place in your calling that people for generations to come will be standing on. There's things that today I stand on the shoulders of those who came before me. This is nothing that I did in and of myself. It's because somebody said, here's my hands. Let me build this foundation. And so I challenge you and I encourage you with that today. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's only by his spirit. And may God utilize your hands to build his temple. Let me bless you right there where you are. Father, thank you for the pack that's joined today that has said, God, here's my hands. That said, God, it's not me. It's nothing that I can do. It's not by my own might. It's not by my own power. It's not by my own education. It's only by your spirit that anything that you want me to do, it will be done. Father, I bless these, your people. Father, God, help us to examine our hearts. Father, help us to, to commit wholly to you and your way. Father, help us to be tools utilized for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in everything, Father, you'll get the glory. You'll get all the honor. And we speak to every great mountain and we say, who are you? We're not afraid. And even if we are, <laughs> I'm going to build this temple even afraid. I'm going to do it afraid. I might cry about it, but I'm going to still do it. And Father, I ask you to grace them. Grace, grace, double grace upon our lives today. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. See you next time.